Therefore, even if it were possible to switch off the influence of Jupiter, the mass of the belt would not be sufficient to form even a small planet similar to Mars. Finally, the least apparent but most significant consequence of Jupiter's migration was the likely destruction of the first planets in our system. The solar system is really different from other systems. Many of the known planetary systems similar to ours have super-Earths in their composition. These planets are larger than Earth and consist of either rock or gas or a combination of both. So why don't we have planets like that in our system? Astronomer Constantine Batygin suggests that such planets may have existed in the early days of the solar system. However, it's possible that Jupiter destroyed the first generation of planets. The gravitational influence of Jupiter, which hypothetically traveled close to the Sun and then back to current orbit where it is now, led to the collision of the forming planets. In fact, Jupiter may have set the stage for the formation of the planets we know and, of course, the planet we live on. However, the formation of planets takes a very long time from humanity's point of view, several million years. Therefore, Mercury, Venus, and Earth continued to develop from an already slightly depleted protoplanetary disk.